So I would request uh, permanent uh, representative of Pakistan mission to the United Nations, Ambassador Munir Akram, start and brief the media. Thank you, Mariam. Um, Pakistan welcomes the adoption by consensus of the UN Security Council resolution on humanitarian and other assistance to Afghanistan. We thank the United States for presenting the resolution. We also thank China and Russia for improving and clarifying the provisions of the resolution as adopted. <clears throat> At the recent OIC Foreign Ministers Conference in Islamabad, Prime Minister Imran Khan stated that the targeted sanctions against certain individuals and entities in Afghanistan must not prevent humanitarian and other essential assistance to the Afghan people who are facing a dire humanitarian and economic crisis. It is clear that the Security Council resolution is not a carve-out or an exemption from the sanctions regime. The resolution clearly confirms the international legality that humanitarian assistance and other activities that support basic needs of the Afghan people are not a violation of the provisions of the Security Council sanctions and that the processing and payment of funds, other financial assistance or economic resources, and the provision of goods and services necessary to ensure the timely delivery of such assistance or to support such activities are permitted. This is the language of Operative Paragraph 1 of the resolution. It is regrettable that some in the Council still seem to want to use humanitarian and economic support to the Afghan people to extract political concessions. This is regrettable insensitivity to the tragic suffering of the Afghan nation. We hope that with the adoption of this resolution, the international community, member states, the UN agencies, NGOs, will all be able to provide all possible assistance to the Afghan people without being concerned about any legal impediments. Pakistan commends the leadership role of the Secretary General in mobilizing humanitarian and essential assistance to help the Afghan people. We are gratified that the flash appeal issued last September by OCHA has been more than fully funded. The UN has now issued the largest humanitarian appeal for Afghanistan, $4.3 billion. We hope that the international community will respond generously and fully to this appeal. The OIC foreign ministers have appealed to the member states of OIC, to the international community, including the UN system, international organizations and international financial institutions, to continue to provide all possible recovery, reconstruction, development, and technical and material assistance to, the, to Afghanistan. The OIC has set up a humanitarian trust fund under the Islamic Development Bank, a food security system, and an expert group to revive the Afghan banking system. It has also appointed a special envoy to coordinate such assistance. The OIC's assistance to Afghanistan will be coordinated closely with the United Nations. As the OIC has emphasized, access to Afghanistan's financial resources will be critical. We hope that Afghanistan's financial assets will be released very soon. Meanwhile, 
we believe that the international community, uh, community's engagement with uh, the Afghan authorities will help to promote the objectives of inclusivity, human rights, especially women's rights, and effective action against terrorism, paving the way for normalization, peace and security, and development in Afghanistan. Pakistan will continue to play a central role in this process. Thank you, and I'd be happy to take your questions. Uh, thank you very much. I would request uh, the on-site correspondents to take the question first, please. Thank you, Marine. Thank you, Ambassador. Ray Bouchafara from Sky News Arabia. Uh, Ambassador, this morning some uh, Security Council members uh, held uh, Taliban responsible for the situation in Afghanistan, saying that they must be held accountable. Uh, do you have any uh, comment on that? You know, that is uh, obviously the issue of accountability um, uh, will need to be addressed at some time. Uh, there has been, obviously, violations of human rights and cr uh, criminal behavior. Uh, but we must see that this accountability is comprehensive and equitable. And therefore, if an accountability process uh, is undertaken, that this will take into account all the crimes committed by anybody in Afghanistan over the last uh, two decades. Um, so that is, that is at least our approach. We don't know whether a process will start or not. Uh, but if it does start, we hope that it will be equitable and comprehensive. Celia. Good morning, Ambassador. Are you confident or do you believe that the Taliban can really lead the country to, let's say, a better life or peace and respect of human rights? I think uh, <clears throat> we should obviously see uh, the realities on the ground. After 40 years, for the first time, there is one authority in Kabul which controls the whole of Afghanistan. This is the first time in 40 years. Uh, the Taliban have promised to respond to the desires and, and concerns of the international community on inclusivity, on human rights, including women's rights, and on action against terrorism. They have taken some steps on all these concerns. They are not they have not fully satisfied the international community as yet. But the movement, the direction of the steps they have taken is in the right, in the right direction of what the international community wants. But they are facing a major humanitarian and economic crisis. If the international community does not help the Afghan people at this time, we are likely to face chaos, uh, we may face renewed conflict, and in such conditions, the terrorist groups which may be located in Afghanistan will gain strength, and we may once again have a threat to the international community, not only from terrorism, but also mass massive migration from Afghanistan. Will people, millions will flow out if there is starvation, and starvation leads to migration. Uh, so I think uh, the international community has no alternative but A, to help the Afghan people, and B, to engage with the Taliban 
in order to promote what we desire uh, from them and to help them to stabilize the country. I think we have no, we have no alternative but to take these actions. Forgive me, Ambassador, but how, what is an alternative when young girls and women cannot live freely? What kind of a country is it? Um, well, I do not want to pass a judgment on, on, on the situation on the ground, but I think you are seeing reports. Uh, this is an Islamic country in a conservative society. Uh, it, the definition of what human rights are and what standards apply are different in different countries, but the basic direction they have undertaken to, there is no massacre. Uh, there has been no massacre. Uh, there have been no um, uh, violations, massive violations of human rights that have taken place. Uh, the, the fear of, of, of revenge actions has not transpired. So I think we have no choice but to work with what is the reality and to promote a better reality. And that is what we are aiming for. Uh, I don't think anybody will say that it's a perfect situation. No, it's a difficult situation. It's difficult for so many reasons. 20 year, 40 years of conflict, uh, a drought, repeated long drought in the country, a COVID pandemic that is out of control, no food in assistance, a dependency on foreign, foreign money, which has been cut off suddenly. So there is a crisis. And if we don't deal with this crisis, we will have a worse crisis. That's what we're saying. So we have to work with what the realities are on the ground and try to improve those realities, and that is our effort. Thank you very much. I would request Ms. <coughs> Pamela Falk to ask the question now. Uh, thank you, Mariam, and thank you, Ambassador Akram, uh, for the briefing. Really appreciate it. It's Pamela Falk from CBS News. You mentioned that it is regrettable that some countries on the Council see this resolution as extracting political concessions. And the U.S. said that this is not a blank check that they expect Afghanistan to live up to its expectations. So do you think the United States, by asking Afghanistan to live up to its expectations, is trying to extract concessions out of the aid? And second, related, do you think the Taliban will agree to allow aid organizations to directly deliver this aid to people and circumvent the government itself. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pamela. Um, first of all, uh, <clears throat> let me respond to your second point about the Taliban allowing aid organizations to deliver aid directly. <clears throat> they are doing so. Uh, and, and I think the uh, United Nations uh, emergency coordinator and the UNAMA um, special SR, the SRS. She have both confirmed that the Taliban are facilitating the direct delivery of assistance to the Afghan people, uh, either through the UN bodies or through NGOs, and they are not standing in the way of of the delivery of such assistance. So I, I think that's that's your second point, uh, with regard to the political. Uh, concessions. I, I think <clears throat> if we were to say that we hope that the Taliban will live up to our expectations, this is a universal, universal uh, position. It is also our position, Pakistan's position, that we hope the Taliban will live up to our expectations. But this resolution does not provide the the kind of le uh, leverage or ex that that some have presumed, uh, and and the, this resolution is very clear, 
that the provision of humanitarian assistance and basic needs of the Al Afghan people is not conditioned uh, because it is not impeded by the sanctions regime or by anything else. Humanitarian assistance under international law is, is to be provided without conditions. So my, my reference to um, the attempts by some to extract political concessions was a reference to some other statements uh, that were made in the course of the Council's meeting this morning. I will not mention specifically who, uh, but I think you have all heard the statements uh, and, and we can understand uh, who, the, who these countries are. Okay. Thank you very much, Pamela. Uh, I would request Abdul Hamid Siam. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Pamela. Abdul Hamid Siam, you are. Thank you. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. This is Abdul Hamid Siam from the Arabic Daily Al Quds Al Arabi. And I have uh, two questions uh, interrelated. My first question is about the OIC meeting in Islamabad and how do you assess this conference? Did the OIC live up to its expectation? Did they extend a helping hand to the people of Afghanistan? And my second uh, question about the security situation in Afghanistan and how you evaluate the security situation in general, especially on the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Are there many, some refugees from Afghanistan, from Pakistan going back to their homeland? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sam. Um, first of all, on the issue of the OIC living up to expectations, uh, I, you know, it is certainly a hope that the OIC will live up to its expectations. We expect that um, some of the uh, more uh, affluent members of the OIC uh, will be able to provide substantial uh, assistance for Afghanistan, and that is the purpose for which the Humani Humanitarian Trust Fund has been created uh, under the Islamic Development Bank. So that, that trust fund will channel the assistance from OIC countries uh, and we expect that the size will be quite quite uh, substantial uh, for 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 helping Afghanistan. Um, secondly, <clears throat> on the security situation, um, the, there are various levels of the security situation. Um, as I said, <clears throat> in Afghanistan at the moment, there is no major conflict, internal conflict. Uh, the, the authorities in Kabul are in control of the entire country. At least this is what we are told. Um, as far as the border is concerned, uh, there have been some uh, initial uh, movements uh, from Afghanistan into Pakistan. We, of course, as you know, we evacuated 80,000 people. Uh, out of Afghanistan, uh, all, all the people who, requ who we were requested to, to evacuate, we evacuated almost 80,000 people. Uh, on the border, the, some people have, um, some migration, some crossing over has taken place. Um, f and we have admitted people with valid visas for medical reasons or for other special reasons. Um, so far, uh, I am not aware of the numbers of Afghan refugees who have gone back to Afghanistan. I, I, I am not certain whether there has been any organized uh, return of refugees so far to Afghanistan. But we hope um, that <clears throat> eventually the United Nations will be able to organize a fully funded program for the repatriation of the over 3.5 million Afghan refugees who are in Pakistan uh, and continue to be in Pakistan at the present moment. Thank you very much, Abdul Hamid. Uh, I will request Ms. Batul Yuruk to ask the question now. Uh, thank you very much, Maryam. Thank you, Ambassador, for doing this. Uh, I was late. I am not sure if you have already addressed it, but 
uh, else to ask. There were some media reports, reports that the UN was proposing uh, nearly $6 million to the Taliban to provide security to the UN staff and UN premises in the country. Uh, I was wondering what your take is and if the UN should be doing it for their security. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Batul. Um, I, I must confess uh, that <clears throat> I also saw the media reports this morning, and I have no no information. I think that probably the, the UN might be in a better position to to respond to to that question. I I don't personally have any information on that. So, if there are no more questions, I would request uh, Ambassador to say thanks. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for, for being uh, with us at such uh, short notice. Uh, we thought it was uh, uh, important to make our position clear uh, with respect to the Security Council resolution and also to inform uh, the media and the press here about the results of the OIC conference in Islamabad. So thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you very much for making yourself available. Thank you.